Animal AIDS Anti-Vivisection Campaign Manager, Jessamy Karatoga. Thank you. Oh. Um, thank you everybody for coming here. Um, I know this is obviously for all of us a really important day um, to mark what happens to animals in laboratories um, each and every day all around the world. Um, last year I spoke at the World Day gathering in Manchester about beagles, um, beagle dogs in laboratories and the hideous experiments that were being done to them. Um, and I think it's fair to say most people love dogs. Um, there's a few here today. Um, it's also true that the public love dogs. If you have evidence of dogs being starved, beaten, um, dying of thirst, quite rightly it makes the news and people are angry. Um, sadly, the plight of some animals in laboratories is of less interest to some members of the public. Some medical charities who will tell you they don't use primates, they don't use dogs, but they do use some animals, as if those animals are less important, less capable of feeling pain. Some of the media aren't interested in other animals. They're interested in a story if it contains dogs or primates, but they're not really bothered if we're talking about mice or fish. And amongst the most widely used and frequently ignored animals in laboratories, which I'm going to talk to you about today, are mice. I'm here from Animal Aid, and Animal Aid, I think, hopefully in common with all of you, think that mice matter. Mice matter as much as other familiar animals, such as cats and dogs. We feel the same level of anger and outrage when we read of any animal being given electric shocks, being forced to have heart attacks, being brain damaged, being starved to death or dying of thirst. They matter. Mice matter. So thank you for coming out today to stand up and be counted for the mice. Currently, mice comprise about 75% of the animals who are used and abused in laboratories in the UK. In 2015, there were a total of 3,034,849 mice used in laboratories. Now, that is a horrifying statistic, but even more chilling, perhaps, is the situation in the United States, where mice are not even considered to be animals under the legislation which governs laboratories. They don't even bother to the number of mice that they use and kill in America. Global estimates of the number of animals killed in laboratories range from 82 to 154 million a year. That's an average of 115 million and this is thought to be an underestimate. So if the proportion of species used are the same globally as they are in the UK, this represents 86 million mice used and killed each year in laboratories. That's 86 million. That's three mice per second dying in laboratories around the world. Three mice each and every second are being used and abused and killed. And it's wrong. We all know how wrong it is to use animals in experiments. And a lot of you are probably aware of the issue of gen genetically modified mice and the different strains of mice that exist in laboratories. Along with these strains that scientists create in order to try and model human diseases, the animals have many, many problems before they've even been used in the experiments. Some have increased fluid around their brain. Some have abnormally small eyes. Some have an absence of one or both eyes. They can have misaligned teeth heart problems and seizures. Now, some of you who know about Animal Aid's Victims of Charity campaign will be aware of the fact that we've been highlighting for years the things that are done to animals, often funded by medical research charities, or they're funding the centres that do this work, or they're funding the scientists. So I'm just going to run through a few of the things that we've issued, um, that we've highlighted, sorry, over the years. In November 2014, the British Heart Foundation, who most of you will know about, helped to fund dreadful animal experiments, which included mice deliberately being given heart attacks. The anaesthetised mice had their chests open up and the blood flow to their hearts was blocked for between 5 and 30 minutes in order to induce a heart attack. In December 2014, experiments involving motor neurone disease association funded researchers involved GM mice 
who are bred to suffer limb paralysis, anxiety, a loss of body weight and motor dysfunction, so basically the inability to walk about. In March 2015, we highlighted how Crook Cancer Research UK co-funded a study, two phases of which involved mice. In one phase, nude mice had cancer cells injected under their skin. The cancer was allowed to grow for three weeks before some of the mice were given treatment. Another phase involved a group of GM mice being poisoned for six months. They were poisoned with a chemical that's traditionally used in the leather and motor fuel industry. This is all done to cause cancer, to try and work out why humans get cancer and to heal human cancer. In September 2015, the Alzheimer's Society co-funded some more experiments where GM mice had, um, for eight weeks, had a drug injected into their abdomens. This is a drug that's currently used to treat diabetes in humans. The animals then underwent a series of very stressful behavioural tests, which I'll cover some behavioural tests later. After these tests, which can actually be terrifying for the animals, they were anaesthetised, had holes drilled in their skulls so that electrodes could record their brain activity. In October 2016, Animal Aid highlighted a research centre which was founded with money from Arthritis Research UK. This centre provided a grant for experiments on 10 week old male mice. The experiments involved operating on the mice to intentionally damage one knee. Animals that were mutilated in this way were killed over a period of time to monitor what happens or to try to see what happens in humans with arthritis. And our latest expose was from February this year. Cancer Research UK apparently provided very generous financial support for experiments where mice had cancer cells injected into their hearts. The male mice received prostate cancer cells and the female mice received breast cancer cells. These cells were circulated around the mice's body in an attempt to give them cancer. As I mentioned earlier, some of the animals, some of the mice that are tortured are then tested in order to see how that torture has affected them physiologically. This is called behavioural testing and these are a few of the tests that would happen in laboratories to mice after they've been abused. The Morris water maze. This forces mice to swim in a tank of water until they can locate a surface platform on which to rest. The platform is subsequently hidden and the mice must remember its location at the same time as trying to escape through frantic swimming. The rotor rod test. This is a machine with rotating rods which the mice or rats are placed onto. The rods then rotate and the mice keep walking forward in order not to fall off. The machine's manufacturer describes how this utilises the fear of falling as a natural motivator. Another test is the hot plate test. During this experiment, the mouse or other animal is placed on a heating surface, heated to a specific temperature. Someone then observes this animal standing on a hot plate and times them until they do the first thing, which is to lick their paws. Second thing is to jump in an attempt to escape the heat. This Monday, the 24th of April, Animal Aid launched our latest campaign called Mice Matter because we, like you, believe that all animals matter, irrespective of their size and how the public see them. We want to spread the world about how important mice are and how they're beautiful in their own way and for their own sakes. Did you know that mice in the wild may eat up to 200 small meals each night, visiting many different sites as they go? If you can compare that to the boring diet that they get fed in the laboratory, where they have no room to run around and forage. Male mice will sing to female mice in a, in a courtship. Female mice may make up to 150 trips in order to gather material for her nest, for her babies. Laboratory cages can never replicate the complexity of life experienced by mice in the wild. It doesn't matter how enriched a cage is, caged animals can't control where they go. They can't burrow, they can't escape unpleasant things, unpleasant people, and they can't explore. 
there's ample evidence that animals living in laboratories, including mice, suffer merely from their day-to-day -day living conditions. Even moving and cleaning cages can cause stress in animals. The vibrations of machines can cause them stress. The lights can cause them stress. The very presence of humans can cause them stress. Additionally, prey animals such as mice tend to hide their signs of pain and distress, which makes them completely unsuitable for the way they're managed in laboratories. They're often kept in containers stacked on racks with thousands of animals per room. The scope for suffering is enormous. These incidents, the following incidents I'm going to describe to you, were reported in UK laboratories in just two years. Now this is not all of the incidences that are reported, and these are only ones that the Home Office inspectors found out about, so you can imagine how many have gone unmissed, unreported. Four mouse pups were left in a cage without their mother, who obviously was the source of food and water. The pups died. A license holder found a litter of ten newborn pups who'd been bred by mistake, so they tried to gas the pups to kill them. They weren't killed properly and were found the next day alive in a rubbish bag. A cage of four sick mice were discovered. One died immediately and the others were killed because there was no food in the cage and they may have been like that for up to five days since their cage had been changed. This is despite four different technicians checking the mice daily. No one had apparently noticed their lack of food or the deteriorating condition of these beautiful sentient animals. 26 mice were being exported to another laboratory to have experiments done on them and were placed in 15 unsuitably small containers in order to move them. 30 minutes later, when somebody tried to move them into their transport boxes, 17 were, all, seven were already dead and the rest were so distressed due to a lack of oxygen that they were killed immediately. Another license holder thought they'd killed three mice by bleeding them under anaesthetic and then breaking their necks. The mice were taken to have tissue removed and it was seen that only one mouse was dead. One still had a beating heart and one had recovered consciousness and moved. The mice who had moved had undergone a surgical incision in his abdomen, so obviously would have been exposed to significant suffering. Four mice were found drowned in a waterlogged cage. This was due to a water leak. Although the technician had checked the cage, they didn't check the affected cage. They, sorry, they checked the cage rack, but they didn't check each cage. The dead mice were found four days after the leak occurred. Now some people might argue that all of this suffering is worthwhile if it leads to a benefit for humans. They might think that misery is acceptable if we cure all the human diseases in the world. However, we all know that is wrong. As well as being inhumane, research with mice is unscientific. Animal experiments do not reliably predict what will happen in humans. Mice are not miniature humans. We are not big mice. There are numerous differences between mice and humans. Mice and human livers activate or neutralize cancer-causing substances quite differently. So trying to give mice things that will kill them or kill humans is just not going to work. Mice lungs are very different from human lungs. Mice cannot vomit. Some human conditions, such as mental illness and Alzheimer's, do not naturally occur in mice. Yet despite this, mice are still used in Alzheimer's research. One, academically recent, one academic recently stated of the mice models, as they call them, of Alzheimer's, you are creating a problem that doesn't exist in the mice at all. You create the problem and you remove the problem. He likened this to placing a plastic bag over somebody's head in order to simulate breathing problems. As he said, it's easy to cure. You take the plastic bag off their head, but what have you actually done? We know animal experiments don't work. They're inhumane, they're failing the animals, and they're failing people. We know that animals suffer in laboratories even before the experiments start, and we know how brutal and terrifying those experiments are. So we must speak out for them and make vivisection a thing of the past. Thank you very much.